What's going on my fellow rock and rollers? Don't forget to hit the bell notification icon to be notified every time I put out a new video on my channel. You can't really talk about the band Journey without mentioning frontman Steve Perry. He led the band to massive success in the 80s, then quit, and then returned in the 90s until finally saying goodbye to the band and becoming recluse for almost two decades. So why did he quit Journey and whatever happened to him? Stay tuned to find out. Journey was massive in the 80s, they seemed to release an album almost every year, they had numerous hit singles, and even had their own video game released which was a pretty big feat back then, considering this was decades before Guitar Hero released standalone band games. That's not to say the game was very good, in fact, it wasn't. And, live to rock another day. and Perry would lead Journey through the group's most commercially successful periods from 1977 to 1987, and again from 1995 to 1998. In between his stints with the band, he also launched a successful solo career, but also became reclusive for almost two decades before finally returning to music just a few years ago. Steve Perry was the son of Portuguese parents in California, and his dad was a vocalist and co-owner of the radio station KNGS. Following his parents ending their relationship, he grew up on his grandparents' farm with his mother, and the defining moment for his life would be at age 12 when he heard the Sam Cooke song Cupid, and it was that moment that inspired him to begin a career in music. In his early 20s, Perry moved around California playing in different bands. The moment that really changed his life was when he received a phone call from Journey's manager, who had been given a tape of one of Perry's previous bands and was impressed with the singer's voice. Journey at this point in time was more progressive in their sound and was fronted by Robert Fleischman. Fleischman didn't prove to be a good fit for the band and didn't get along with the group's manager. The band's manager, Herbie Herbert, thought that he was cocky and believed that Perry would be a great replacement. That's not to say Fleischman wasn't important to the band. In fact, he co-wrote one of the band's biggest hits, Wheel in the Sky. Surprisingly, Perry would tour with the band while Fleischman was still in the group. But to avoid arousing any suspicion, Fleischman was told he was a roadie's Portuguese cousin. Then during a sound check ahead of a gig in Long Beach, California, Perry sang with the band on stage while Fleischman was off stage. Fleischman was informed shortly afterwards that Perry was a new singer and he was out of the group. Perry brought a much more pop influenced sound to the group and the addition of the singer would also alienate the group's longtime fans of their progressive sound. Not that it really mattered though, as Perry appeared to be the missing piece the band needed to reach a new level of success. Following the addition of Perry, the band would go on to dominate the 80s rock scene with hit album after hit album. Between the time he joined the band in 1984, Journey essentially released an album almost every year. And by 1984, the band finished touring on their 1983 record Frontiers, and its members took a much needed break, while Perry pursued a solo career with his debut record Street Talk, which was pretty successful selling over 2 million copies and featuring the singles Oh Sherry and Foolish Heart. During his time in Journey, Perry also worked with other artists singing on several Sammy Hagar tracks, and in 1985 he sang on the benefit song We Are The World. After a long hiatus, Journey would reassemble in 1985 to work on their follow-up record Raised On Radio. It was during the sessions the wheels came off as Perry's mother had fallen ill, making the singer largely unavailable as he was attending to his ill parent. His mother would pass away during this time, and the band would manage to finish the album, and Raised on Radio would be the group's final record with Perry for the decade. The band toured to support the record, but by the end of the album cycle, Perry was done with the band as he was mentally exhausted from the whole ordeal, and the band disbanded in 1987. Following his departure from the group, Perry in 1988 began recording his second solo album titled Against the Wall, which would be temporarily shelved. According to Perry, he didn't have the passion to continue to work on new music at the time, and between 1988 and 1994, he largely kept out of the spotlight, making one-off appearances on stage with Bon Jovi and his former bandmates. By 1994, Perry was back with another solo record titled For the Love of Strange Medicine, which was also pretty successful. The solo album paved the way for Perry to rejoin Journey in 1996 to begin work on a new album titled Trial by Fire. The album did well commercially, but the planned tour was cancelled following a hip injury Perry was dealing with. He didn't get the surgery for the hip until a year later, and that frustrated his bandmates who wanted to get back to work. 
By the late 90s, Journey was done once again, and Perry would receive a phone call from his bandmates advising him to pursue other career ventures as they grew tired of his lack of motivation and drive. Steve Perry would tell podcaster Mitch LaFon, That fractured the stone for me. That breaks it. I was given an ultimatum, and I don't respond well to ultimatums, he'd say. It was also around this time that drummer Steve Smith quit as well. And Journey decided to soldier on, finding a new singer in Steve Ogeri, who stayed with the band until 2007, until he was dismissed. During Ogeri's time in the group, he was accused of using pre-recorded tracks on tour, something which the band didn't completely deny. And the wounds between Perry and his former bandmates appeared to be pretty fresh even in 2001, when VH1 did an episode of Behind the Music profiling Journey. Perry would make some surprising remarks that puzzled his bandmates and former manager. Perry claimed he felt like an outsider in the group, despite the fact that his bandmates thought he exerted a lot of creative control over Journey. The band's manager summed up his reaction to the statement, saying, that's like the Pope saying he never really felt Catholic. And one of the strangest twists in Journey's story was that keyboardist Jonathan Kane and guitarist Neil Sean found Filipino singer Arnel Panetta on YouTube, who did a lot of justice to Journey's songs. As Journey continued to sell out arenas with a new singer, Perry would stay out of the spotlight until 2013 when he penned a letter recounting a tragic relationship he went through. The singer met a woman online named Kelly Nash, who was a cancer survivor. The pair met, fell in love, and were together for a year and a half, but Nash's cancer returned, taking her life. Perry had his own cancer scare in 2013, requiring surgery to remove melanoma. And it was during this time Perry made some more appearances, including showing up at baseball games and on stage with other bands, but he was also quite candid about why he never revisited his old Journey songs, claiming that his voice may not be able to pay justice to those tracks. Fast forward now to 2017, and Journey would be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and Perry once again took to the stage with his bandmates almost after two decades. While he did speak at the podium, he wouldn't perform with the group, but any beef seemed to have been squashed as he spoke fondly about his bandmates and even praised new singer Arnel Panetta, saying I love you, and praising the singer for his showmanship. Following the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction, Perry revealed that he had a burning desire to create new music, revealing that he'd been working on a new album since 2015 that was largely inspired by his girlfriend Kelly Nash. His follow-up solo album would come out 24 years since his last release in 2018, with the record Traces, which would be a top 10 hit on the Billboard charts and receive mostly favorable reviews. And most recently, Perry released a three-song holiday EP in October of 2019. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. If you have suggestions for future topics, let me know in the comment section below. Take care.